Praise the Lord. Jesus Christ is Emmanuel. It is something you establish in your heart. Let's raise our voices unto God. Baba mtakatifu tunakuja mbele zako kwa rehema zako na kwa neema yako kwa ajili ya viongozi wetu Mtume Tris kiongozi wa nyumba hii ambaye baba umemwita kwa kusudi lako amekuwa hawezi kwa muda sasa na siku ya leo ameshindwa kabisa kuingia hekaluni mwako Mungu tunamweka mikononi mwako kwa sababu wewe ni Mungu mponyaji wewe ni Mungu mwenye nguvu na mwenye uweza tunasema asante kwa ajili ya rehema zako Tunasema asante kwa ajili ya neema na fadhili zako. Jina lako libarikiwe baba Mungu wetu. Jina lako limidiwe kwa sababu wewe unaweza. Uwezo wako ni wa ajabu na rehema zako ni za ajabu. Wewe ni mwaminifu wa haki na wa kweli. Tunaomba baba ukapate kumponya mtumishi wako Tris. Ukapate kumsaidia sawa sawa na uradi wa mapenzi yako. Kwa sababu wewe ni Mungu mponyaji e Mungu. Mungu atunge tamani aweze kulala hasa katika wakati huu na kwa ajili ya wito na huduma kuu uliyoweka juu yake kama mbeba maono tunamweka mbele zako. Mwinue baba kwa rehema zako, kwa neema na kwa utukufu wako. Umponye baba katika mwili wake kwa ajili ya utukufu wa jina lako Jehova. Asante baba kwa sababu wewe ni mponyaji. Asante baba kwa ajili ya utukufu wako asante baba kwa ajili ya neema yako asante Mungu mwaminifu wa haki jina lako libarikiwe kwa sababu wewe ni mwema na uaminifu wako ni wa ajabu nawe baba utampa uzima tele hata askofu wetu John kule Nairobi endelea kuwa pamoja naye anapopitia matibabu yake wiki hii tena na wiki ijayo tunamweka mikononi mwako kwa ajili ya utukufu wa jina lako wewe ni mweza hakuna kama wewe Jehova Mungu wetu wa rehema asante baba kwa ajili ya neema yako asante baba kwa ajili ya utukufu wa jina lako tunaomba utamimina mafuta mabichi ya roho kwa mtakatifu ya uponyaji juu ya watumishi wako na washirika wengine wa kanisa ambao pia ni wagonjwa wakati huu ambao hatuna taarifa zao tunawaweka mikononi mwako e baba utawaponya tunasema asante kwa damu yako na kwa uponyaji wako ajabu juu yao tunawaweka mikononi mwako na kuwafunika kwa damu yako Yesu asante kwa sababu wewe ni mwema na sitaona habari njema watumishi wako wakisimama wakiwa na nguvu mbele zako wakikuhudumia katika jina la Yesu mokozi wetu amen 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 tuketi my kindly sit Tunaamini kwamba yote atakuwa mema. We believe that all will be well. Haleluya. Haleluya. Hebu tufungue Biblia zetu. Now let's turn our Bibles. Katika kitabu cha ufunuo wa Yohana. In the book of Revelation. Na wakati huo huo tunapoendelea kuwaombea viongozi wetu samahani tumuombee pia kijana wetu Ben na Priska ambaye humoni hapa siku ya leo kwa sababu Priska amekuwa jisiki uh, majira yake yamefika kwa hiyo tuendelee kumombea pia Also as we pray for our leaders let's also pray for Ben and Priska you don't see them here because um, Priska is not feeling well but she's almost due so let's continue to pray for them as well Ufunua Yohana sura ya tatu mstari wa saba hadi wa 13 Revelation chapter 3 from verse 7 up to 13 Tukifika nitasoma na kwa malaika wa kanisa lililoko Philadelphia andika Haya ndiyo anenayo yeye aliye mtakatifu aliye wa kweli aliye na ufunguo wa Daudi yeye mwenye kuufungua wala hapana afungae naye afunga wala hapana afunguae na yajua matendo yako Revelation chapter 3 verse 7 
And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things says he who is holy, he who is true, he who is the key of David, he who opens and no one shuts, and shuts and no one opens. I know your works. See, I have set before you an open door, and no one can shut it, for you have a little strength, have kept my word, and have not denied my name. Tazama nimekupa mlango uliofunguliwa mbele yako ambao hapana awezae kuufunga kwa kuwa unazo nguvu kidogo nawe umelitunza neno langu wala hukulikana jina langu okay. Verse 8 I know your works see I have set before you an open door and no one can shut it for you have a little strength have kept my word and have not denied my name Tazama nakupa walio wa sinagogi la shetani wasemao kwamba ni wayahudi nao sio bali wasema uongo tazama nitawafanya waje kusujudu mbele ya miguu yako na kujua ya kuwa nimekupenda Indeed I will make those of the synagogue of Satan who say they are Jews and are not but lie Indeed I will make them come and worship before your feet kwa kuwa and ume... know kwa... that I have loved you Okay kwa kuwa umelishika neno la subira yangu mimi nami nitakulinda utoke katika saa ya kujaribiwa iliyo tayari kuujilia ulimwengu wote kuwajaribu wakao juu ya nchi because you have kept my command to persevere i also will keep you from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth na ja upesi shika sana ulicho nacho asije mtu akaitwa taji yako behold i am coming quickly hold fast what you have that no one may take your crown yeye ashindaye mtamfanya kuwa nguzo katika hekalu la Mungu wangu wala atatoka humo tena kabisa nami nitaliandika jina la Mungu wangu na jina la mji wa Mungu wangu huo Yerusalemu mpya ushukao kutoka mbinguni kwa Mungu na jina langu mwenyewe lile jipya He who overcomes I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God and he shall go out no more I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God the new Jerusalem which comes down out of heaven from my God and I will write on him my new name Yeye aliye na sikio na alisikia neno hili ambalo roho ayaambia makanisa He who has an ear let him hear what the spirit says to the churches. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Praise the Lord. Katika makanisa saba ya asi ya ndogo ambayo yameandikiwa barua na mtume Yohana in the seven churches of Asia uh, whom this letter was actually written from John the Apostle. Hili ndilo kanisa pekee tunalolikuta ambalo halina lawama. This is the only church that we find that John had nothing to write against them. Makanisa mengi yalikuwa na sifa lakini pia yalikuwa na mambo kadha waliotakiwa wayatengeneze. But the rest of the churches they had some good things and also they had some bad things that they were supposed to do something about. Wakati mtume Paulo alipokuwa anaelekea Yerusalem katika ile safari yake ambayo baadaye ilimpeleka kifungoni kule Rumi when apostle Paul was on his way to Jerusalem um, and, and during that time he was also captured and taken to Rome katika kitabu cha matendo ile sura ya 20 kuanzia mstari wa 17 from the book of acts chapter 20 from verse 17 aliwaita wazee wa kanisa la efeso Paul the apostle called the elders of the Ephesus church na katika mambo mengi aliyowaambia and among many things that he told them aliwaambia kutokana na vita ambavyo vitalikabili kanisa he told them about the persecution that will face the church na mateso haya yatatoka nje na ndani and the persecutions was going to be both from inside and from outside na wakati huu sasa kanisa linapoandikiwa and at this point in time when the church is being addressed kanisa lilikuwa katika hali ya mateso makali kutokana na serikali ya Kirumi the church was going through severe persecution from the roman government mfalme aitawe aitwaye nero aliuchoma mji wa rumi 
akasingizia wa Kristo ndio waliofanya hivyo the king called Nero burnt the the city of Rome of Rome and uh, he said that that act was actually done by Christians jambo hili liliwasababishia wa Kristo mateso makubwa now that event caused a lot of trouble among Christians. Na mateso yaliendelea kuwa makali, wengine wakauawa, wengine kuteswa vibaya. And uh, the persecution were so severe, some were actually tortured and others were killed. Na hayo mateso yalimpeleka Yohana mpaka kwenye kisiwa kiitwacho Patmo. And uh, the persecution took John up to the island called Patmos. Na sasa wakati huo kanisa lilikuwa linateswa na Yohana amewekwa pale kifungoni lakini bado aliweza kuisikia sauti ya Mungu. And so at that point in time the church was going through severe persecution and John the apostle was taken to the island but even at that point in time he heard the voice of God. Kama Paulo alivyomwambia Timotheo mimi nimefungwa lakini neno la Mungu aliwezi kufungwa. Just like what Paul the apostle told, told Timothy that even though I am in chain but the word of God cannot be put in chain. na hayo mateso ya nje kulikuwa na mateso mengine ya ndani kwa ndani ya kanisa. But apart from the external persecution there were some internal persecution within the church itself. Hayo mateso yalisababishwa na watu waliojiita ni wakristo ama ni watumishi wa Mungu lakini hawakuwa watumishi wa Mungu bali walikuwa ni walimu wa uongo. And the internal persecution was actually caused by people who called themselves servants of God but they were actually not servants of God but they were false servants. Mambo ambayo hata kanisa la leo inayapitia. The things that even today's church go through. Tunaweza hapa Tanzania tusione hayo mateso ya nje ya kimwili kuteswa. Now even in our country we might not see the persecution the external persecution. Lakini tumeshaanza kuyaona kidogo. But we have started to see uh, in some places. Kule Bukoba tumeona makanisa ya kichomo na watumishi wa kuuawa. Uh, in places like Bukoba we saw churches being burned and uh, servants being killed. Semu za Mwanza also in Mwanza. Lakini si kwa wingi. But uh, not many instances. Lakini mateso ya ndani yanayotokana na walimu wa uongo ni mengi kila mahali na kila wakati yanaendelea. But internal persecution within the church caused by false teachers or false servants of God they are so so many and they are still going on maana ya philadelphia ni upendo wa kindugu the meaning of philadelphia it means brotherly love lakini ile kanisa tu linaitwa kwamba ni kanisa la mlango ulio wazi but this church is actually called the church of an open door who ndio ujua ama kichwa cha somo letu leo and that is the title of our message today the Kwa church of an open door mlango ulio wazi the church of an open door Mungu mtume Paba mtume Yohana anaambiwa aandike Now apostle John is commanded to write kwamba haya maneno yanatoka kwa mtakatifu na mkweli that the words that is about to write comes from the one who is holy and true Utakatifu na ukweli ni asili na tabia ya Mungu wetu aliye Mungu wa kweli tofauti na miungu mingine So holiness and truth is the character and the nature of God and that sets him apart from any other god Yesu Kristo alipokuwa naomba katika Yohana 10 na 7 mstari wa 3 Jesus Christ while he was praying in John chapter 17 verse 3 Aliomba akasema Baba wakujue wewe Mungu wa pekee na wa kweli na Yesu Kristo uliyemtuma He prayed and said that Father that they may know you the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent Mungu wa kweli ni Mungu anayetaka kuona utakatifu katika maisha ya watu wake. The true God is the one who want to see holiness in the lives of his people. Pia anapenda kuona ukweli katika maisha ya watu wake hata wanapokabiliwa na magumu. He also want to see truth in the lives of his people even when they go through difficult times. Ni wa Kristo wachache wanaoweza kusimama katika utakatifu na ukweli nyakati ngumu. Very few Christians can actually stand in holiness and truth when they go through persecution. Wengi watatumia uongo kama mlango rahisi wa kutoka katika hali ngumu walionayo. 
many will use lie as, as an easy escape from a difficult situation that they go through lakini wa kristo wa kweli lazima wabaki kuwa wa kweli hata katika hali ngumu but true christians must remain true even in difficult times bila kujali hata kama kusimama huko katika ukweli kutagarimu maisha yao without caring that for you by standing in the truth might cost your own life na ndio maana mungu aliliona ili kanisa la philadelphia and that is the reason why god saw the church of philadelphia na atuone na sisi vivyo hivyo siku ya leo and i pray that you will see us the same way today kwamba ni watu wanaosimama katika utakatifu that we are a people who stand in holiness unajua kuabudu miungu lazima kuambatane na uchafu you see when you worship idols you will also uh, go in through uncleanness lazima waite mambo machafu you have to call bad things ndio maana unaitwa ni ulimwengu wa giza and that is why that is actually called the the, the 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 spiritual darkness lakini mungu wetu ni mungu mtakatifu but our god is the holy god anahitaji kuona utakatifu katika maisha yetu and he wants to see holiness in our lives lakini pia anahitaji kuona ukweli katika maisha yetu but also he want to see truth in our lives biblia inasema inunue kweli wala usiuze the bible says that buy the truth but don't sell it mazingira ya kusema uongo ni mengi na ni rahisi situation whereby we can tell that the lie are, are so many and they are very easy lakini tujue ya kwamba uongo ni tabia ya shetani but let's know that uh, telling a lie that is the nature of the devil yes walisema shetani asema hapo uongo hufanya kazi yake maana yeye asili yake ni uongo tangu mwanzo jesus said that when the devil lie he actually do what is his own nature because he has been a liar from the beginning kwa hiyo wa kristo wa kweli lazima wabaki kuwa wa kweli hata katika nyakati ngumu so true christian must remain true even through difficult moments na jambo lingine analolisema and the other thing that he says akasema huyu ambaye ananena nanyi ni yeye aliyenafungua za daudi he who is speaking to you is the one who has the key of david wiki mbili sasa tumekuwa tukijifunza kuhusu tabia za daudi for the past two weeks we've been learning about david's character tumeona mambo zaidi ya 100 labda na mengine zaidi ya hayo and we looked into more than 100 aspects of david kwa nini mungu alipendezwa na moyo wa daudi why was god impressed by david's heart na sasa kwa nini anasema ana ufunguo wa daudi and why is he saying that he has the key of david ufunguo unaonyesha umiliki the key speaks of ownership unaposhikilia ufunguo wa gari lako inamaanisha unalimiliki hakuna mwingine atafungua paka kwa ruhusa yako when you hold the car key it means that no one can actually access your car without your permission nyumba hivyo hivyo the same applies to your house na vitu vingine and many other things lakini ufunguo pia unawakilisha uwezo but the key also speaks of ability na pia unawakilisha mamlaka and also it speaks of authority kwa nini ufunguo wa daudi why the key of david wakati wa sauli during the time of Saul taifa la Israeli na wakati wa waamuzi and during the time of judges taifa la Israeli liliteswa na maadui the nation of Israel went through persecution from the enemies walikuwa wakinyang'anywa mali zao hapa na pale their their properties were confiscated hapa kuwa na utulivu and there was no peace lakini Daudi alipotawala but during the reign of David biblia inatuambia The Bible says kila mahali alikokwenda everywhere he went Mungu alimpa kushinda God gave him victory na aliwatuliza maadui zake zote and he silenced all his enemies na ndio maana anasema and that is why he's saying mimi ninazofungua za Daudi I have the key of David mali amaponena na wayahudi uh, in places where in the Jewish wataelewa kwa haraka kwamba Daudi alifanya nini they could easily understand what the david do wakati wa daudi hakuna adui aliyeinuka during the reign of king david there was no enemy who came against him kulionea taifa la israel 
we prayed uh, who came to persecute the na nation of Israel anasema, and at this time he's saying na mimi pia me also ninazo fungua za Daudi I have the key of David. When you read Revelation chapter 1 verse 18, let's go back to chapter 1 of Revelation chapter. Revelation chapter 1 verse 18 I am he who lives and was dead and behold I am alive forevermore amen and I have the keys of Hades and of death Bwana Yesu asifiwe Praise the Lord Bwana Yesu asifiwe Praise the Lord Kama Daudi alivyotuliza wa maadui wote wa Israel The same way David silenced all the enemies of Israel. Ndivyo na Kristo atakavyotuliza na kuangamiza maaduri wa kanisa, maadui wako wote. Wawe ni magonjwa, umaskini, madharau, chochote kile ambacho si rafiki kwako. It is the same same way that Jesus Christ will silence all the enemies of the church. He will also silence your sicknesses, your diseases, poverty, and anything that is coming against your life. Daudi alituliza uh, taifa la Israel kwa miaka 40 lakini Kristo atatutuliza na kutupa amani milele na hata milele. A David reigned in the nation of Israel for 40 years but Jesus Christ will reign in our lives forever and ever. Anasema tazama nimepewa mamlaka yote mbinguni na duniani. He said behold I've been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Na anamwambia Petro katika Mathayo 16 mstari wa 19, "Nami nimekupa wewe funguo za ufalme wa Mungu, ukifunga hakuna anayefungua na wala ukifungua hapana afungaye." And is also told, is, uh, told Peter in, uh, in Matthew chapter 16 verse 19 that I have given you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. And when you close no one can actually open and when you open no one can close. Jina la Bwana libarikiwe. Blessed be the name of Jina the Lord. Jina la libarikiwe. Blessed be the name Kama of the Lord. Utaamini, If you will believe. Mungu ana uwezo. God has the ability kila kitu juu yetu. to silence anything that will raise up against us. Na sawa na neno lake. And if we walk according to his word, na ukweli, if we lack to stand in truth and holiness, na ukweli, if we stand in truth and holiness, matukano na uongo na kila aina ubaya lazima yaondoke all forms of evil against us must go tununue kweli wala tusiuze kama mithali inavyosema let's buy the truth and not sell it according to proverbs ikiwa hivyo if that is so hakuna adui atakayeinuka mbele yetu there is no enemy who will raise before us. We will speak a word and it will be accomplished. Sometimes we want things to prosper. But we are not in the line. Tunadai haki kwa Mungu. We claim uh, some rights from God. Hakuna haki bila wajibu. But there is no uh, you are right without responsibility. Lazima haki endane na wajibu. Justice and responsibility must go together. Ili tuweze kufunga na kufungua. So that we may be able to to bind and to lose. Sasa tuangalie mambo kadhaa ambayo yalilipa hilo kanisa mlango ulio wazi. Now let's look at uh, several things that made this church to have an open door. Au Mungu alilipa kanisa hili mlango ulio wazi kwa sababu zifuatazo. Oh, God gave the church of Philadelphia an open door because of the following reasons. Namba moja. The first one, walikuwa waaminifu kwa fursa walizopewa. This church was faithful in the opportunities they were given. Mungu anasema nimekupa mlango ulio wazi. God is actually saying that I have given you an open door. 
Sikiliza vizuri. Listen carefully. Walikuwa waaminifu kwa fursa waliopewa. They were faithful in the opportunities that they were given. Ili kujua fursa ambayo Mungu amekupa for you to know the opportunities that God has given you na kujua kwamba huu mlango uko wazi sasa ama hauko wazi and to recognize that this door is now open or closed ni lazima tuwe wasikivu kwa Roho Mtakatifu we must be attentive to the holy spirit sio kila wakati kuna fursa the opportunities are not always there biblia inasema kwa kila jambo kuna majira yake The Bible says that to everything there is a season. Ndugu kuna wakati mlango unafungwa. My brother there is a season when the door is closed. Lakini hawa Mungu aliwapa mlango ulio wazi kwa sababu walielewa fursa ambayo Mungu amewapa. But for this church God gave them an open door because they recognized that there was an open door. Lakini wakati mwingine kwa sababu ya uvivu wetu wa kutokujua vita vya kiroho hatuelewi hata fursa tukiletewa inatupita hivi hivi but sometimes because of our ignorance on our spiritual warfare even when an opportunity arise we don't understand it tunaposoma kitabu cha Esther when you read the book of Esther utaona kwamba taifa la Israeli lilikusudiwa kufanywa mabaya you see that uh, the enemy meant to do evil to the nation of Israel na Yahudi moja kwa jina Mordecai Mungu aliweka mzigo ndani ya moyo wake and there was this one Jewish called Mordecai that God had put a burden on his heart akamwendea mjomba wake Esther ambaye alikuwa Malkia And when to his uncle Esther at that time she was the queen in that kingdom lakini yule Esther hakujali kwa wakati ule But Esther did not show care in that season. Lakini Mordecai akafungua macho yake. But Mordecai opened uh, Esther's eyes. Akasema huje nani anajuaje kwamba huku umeujia ufalme kwa wakati kama huu? And he told her that who knows that you have been a ki- you have come into the kingdom for such a time as Na this. Na macho yake akafunguliwa. And immediately her eyes were opened. Akatumia ile fursa vizuri. And she used that opportunity wisely kwanza kuomba kwa Mungu wa mbinguni first of all to pray to the god of heaven pili kumwendea mfalme kwa ujasiri and secondly to approach the king boldly tatu kuelezea hitaji lake kwa uwazi mbele ya mfalme bila hofu thirdly to explain his 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 request before the king without fear Mungu anasema wakati uliokubalika na likusikia Uh, God is actually saying that in the appointed time I heard you. Ina maana kuna wakati ambapo haukubaliki. That means there is a time which is not appointed. Kwa hiyo naomba tuangalie kwa umakini kidogo. So I want us to look carefully. Fursa inamaanisha nini? What is opportunity? Unaposoma katika kitabu cha hesabu when you read in the book of numbers hatutasoma kwa sasa We will not go there for now. Um, utasoma hesabu 14 mstari wa 42. You can actually read uh, the book of uh, Numbers 14 verse 42. Utaona kwamba Waisraeli baada ya kumnungunikia Mungu, you will see that after the Israelites complained before the Lord. Na Mungu kuambia kwamba kwa sababu ya manunguniko yenu, and God told them because of your murmurings, hamtaingia katika ile nchi you will not enter into the promised land watoto wenu ambao mmesema watakuwa watumwa ndio watakaorithi but your children the one you've said that they are slaves they are the one who will inherit the land walipoteza fursa they lost the opportunity lakini wakasema hapana sisi tutakwea but they said no we will go musa akaambia msikwe but moses told them do not go because you will not prosper god is not with you why should you go and fall before your enemies ndugu kuna wakati ambapo fursa iko wazi mbele yako lazima uijue katika roho Brethren there are time when the opportunity is open before you but you have to know it in the spirit hebu tusome maandiko kada ili tuweze kuelewa jambo hilo let's read several scriptures so that we can understand what Matendo it means matendo 16 mstari wa 6 acts 16 verse 6 biblia inatuambia hivi matendo 16 mstari wa 
Acts chapter 16 verse 6 Wakapita katika nchi ya Firgia na Galatia wakikatazwa na Roho Mtakatifu wasilihubiri lile neno katika Asia Now when they had gone through Phrygia and the region of Galatia they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to preach the word in Asia Matendo 14 mstari wa 27 Acts 14 verse 27 hata walipofika wakalikutanisha kanisa wakawaeleza mambo yote aliyoyafanya Mungu pamoja nao ya kwamba amewafungulia mataifa mlango wa imani Acts 14 verse 27 Now when they had come and gathered the church together they reported all that God had done with them and that he had opened the door of faith to the gentiles Unaona hapa Mungu amefungua mlango You see here God had opened a door Lakini katika sura ya 16 anasema Roho Mtakatifu akawakataza wasilihubiri neno katika maeneo hayo But in chapter 16 verse 6 the Holy Spirit told them not to preach the word in Asia Labda sio wakati sahihi Maybe it was not the right time. Labda Mungu atamtuma mtu mwingine kwenda mahali pale. Or maybe God will send someone else to go there. Labda Mungu atawarudisha pale wakati mwingine. Or maybe God will bring them there later. Lakini ninachotaka tuelewe. But what I want us to understand. Ni kwamba lazima tuelewe fursa ambayo Mungu ameiweka mbele yetu. We must understand the opportunity that the Lord has set before us. Wakorinto wa kwanza 16 mstari wa 9. First Corinthians 16 verse 9. Wakorinto wa kwanza 16 mstari wa 9. Kwa maana nimefunguliwa mlango mkubwa wa kufaa sana na wako wengi wanipingao. First Corinthians 16 verse 9. For a great and effective door has opened to me and there are many adversaries. Unaona Paulo alielewa. You see Paul understood. Kwamba kuna mlango umefunguliwa mbele yake na wenye mafanikio. That there was an open door before him which was very successful. Pamoja na kwamba kuna maadui. Uh, even though there were adversaries. Wa Korinto wa pili Tusome wa Korinto wa pili Sura ya pili mstari wa 12 Second Corinthians chapter 2 verse 12 Basi nilipofika Troa kwa ajili ya injili ya Kristo nikafunguliwa mlango katika Bwana Furthermore when I came to Troas to preach Christ's gospel and a door was opened to me by the Lord Tufungue wa Kolosai 4:3 Let's turn to Colossians chapter 4 verse 3 wa Kolosai sura ya 4 mstari wa 3 Colossians chapter 4 verse 3 Mkiuko mkituombea na sisi pia kwamba Mungu atufungulie mlango kwa lile neno lake tuinene siri ya Kristo ambaye kwa ajili yake nimefungwa Meanwhile praying for uh, also for us that God would open to us a door for the word to speak the mystery of Christ for which I am also in chains. Kwa hiyo watu wa Mungu nilichotaka tuelewe So people of God what I wanted you to understand Kwa nini Mungu alilipa kanisa hili mlango ulio wazi? Why did God give the church of Philadelphia an open door? Ni kwa fursa ambayo Mungu amewapa. It is because they understood the opportunity that was set before them Jenny by God. So which door is open before you today? And which door is closed and you're trying to open it by using your own strength? Na kwa sababu wakati mwingine hatuoni katika roho and because sometimes you don't see in the spirit tunaumia we suffer lakini lazima tumsikie Mungu. But we must hear from God. Kwamba ni mlango upi uko wazi na ni mlango upi umefungwa. That which door is open and which door is closed. Ili tusipoteze muda katika mlango uliofungwa. So that we don't waste our time on a closed door. Badala yake tukumbatie ile fursa ya mlango wazi ambayo Mungu anatupatia. 
Instead, we should embrace the open door and an opportunity that God has given us. The second reason which made God to set an open door before this church, it was their spiritual capacity. It was their ability to understand spiritual things. They were very few within that city even compared to the other groups that were there and those that were worshipping idols. But they did not care about that. They had spiritual capacity. They knew who they were and who was with them. Because the Lord is not saved by many or few. Because, but he saves because he is Lord. They understood the source of their strength. Just like David understood. And he said that those are depending on horses. They're, they're depending on chariots. But we will call upon the name of the Lord. The church of Philadelphia understood about that. Uh, Proverbs 21 verse 31. Farasi wandaliwa kwa ajili ya vita. Proverbs 21:31 The Bible says that a horse is prepared for the day of battle. Tusome, tusome. Mithali 21:31 Proverbs 21:31 The horse is prepared for the day of battle, but deliverance is of the Lord. Hawa watu walielewa jambo hilo. These people understood about this principle. That a horse is prepared for the day of battle. But deliverance comes from the Lord. Brethren, let's understand this. We must understand who we are. And we must understand who is with us. And what, how, how much power does he has? Because what we have cannot help us. It is only the Lord who can bring deliverance. But the, the third reason it is their faithfulness in the word of God. The Bible says that you have hold fast to my word. This was the secret of their life and their ministry. According to Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. Today's church, do we love the word of God? Do we read the word of God? The word of God is Christ himself. Do we obey the word? Do we live according to the word? Or we just confess it with our mouth, but our lives are totally different from what we confess? To hold fast to the word of God. And uh, to put it into our hearts. To hold fast to the word of God. And to guard our hearts. Let's turn to Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs Hallelujah. chapter 4. If you're together, can, can I see your, wave your hands? Proverbs chapter 4. From verse 20 to 23. Mwanangu sikiliza maneno yangu tega sikio lako uzisikie kauli zangu My son give attention to my words incline your ear to my sayings Zisiondoke machoni pako uzihifadhi ndani ya moyo wako Do not let them depart from your eyes keep them in the midst of your heart Maana ni uhai kwa wale wazipatao 
na afya ya mwili wao wote for they are life to Hallelujah. those who find them and health to all their flesh linda moyo wako kuliko yote uyalindayo maana ndiko zitokako chemichemi za uzima keep your heart with all diligence for out of it spring the issues of life mungu analiambia kanisa hili God is speaking to this church. Because your strength is little. And you have hold fast to my word. David said that in my heart I have put your word that I may not sin against you. When you fall into sin it is an indication that you have a very uh, you don't have enough Nazima word in your heart you have to hold fast to the word of god tulisome, we must read it and we must understand Tulitafakari. it we must meditate on Tuliishi. it we must live according to Na the word yetu. and we have to protect or to guard our hearts Mwisho. finally imani yao kwa Christo. their faith in christ Hilo ni jambo la nne. That is the fourth reason. Ambalo lilimfanya Mungu aweke mlango ulio wazi mbele yao. Which made God to set an open door before the church of Philadelphia. Walinena kuhusu imani yao bila kuogopa. They spoke about their faith without fear. Walisema wazi jinsi ambavyo wametengana na ulimwengu. They said it clearly how they were separated from the world. Kumbuka kuwa mtu anaweza kumkiri Kristo kwa maneno lakini kwa matendo yake akamkana. Remember a person can confess Christ through his mouth but he can deny Christ through his Yesu own actions. Yesu anasema kwa kuwa umenikiri jina langu. Now Jesus is actually saying because you have proclaimed my name. Nami nitakuokoa katika saa ya kujaribiwa iliyo tayari kuujilia ulimwengu wote. I will deliver you from the hour of trouble that will come over all the whole world. Wa Kristo wenye hofu. Christians who have are fearful. Na mashaka and who have doubts hawatasimama nyakati ngumu they will not stand during difficult times yesu anasema katika injili ya luka 12 mstari wa 8 jesus is saying in luke chapter 12 verse 18 atakaye nikiri he who will confess me mbele za watu before people mimi nitamkiri mbele za baba yangu i will confess him before my father and whoever denies me nami nitamkana mbele ya baba yangu i will also deny him before my father wiki ijayo tutakuwa uwanjani kuanzia leo next week we will be uh, in the gospel crusade ni wakati wa kuonyesha kwamba wewe ni mkristo This is the time to show that you are a Christian. Wa Kristo wengi hawaendi mikutano ya nje. Many Christians don't actually go to open air crusades. Wanajulikana wao ni nani? Because people will see who they are. Wataonekana na wapenzi wao. They will be seen by their lovers. Lakini kanisa hili but this church walikiri kuhusu imani yao bila kuogopa. They confessed they spoke about their faith without fear. Na jinsi walivyotengana na ulimwengu and how they were separated from the world even though they were still in the world those are the things that made Jesus Christ he did not condemn this church at all but he gave this church a promise he praised this church and he promised that he will continue to be with that church chunguza moyo wako examine your heart na mimi chunguze moyo wangu and i also examine my own heart je kutokana na haya ambayo umeyasikia according to what you've heard fursa ambayo mungu anakupa the opportunity that god is giving you kwa sababu hatuzami katika mambo ya mungu because we are not deep in the things of god fursa zinatupita usually opportunities they Na just escape kunangania kwenye milango iliyofungwa and we continue to push through closed doors tusimame let us stand hebu tuseme na Mungu kwa dakika chache let's talk to god in few minutes kanisa ni wewe na mimi the church is you and me kwa wakati huu siangalie kanisa la Zion kama kanisa la Zion At this time don't just look the church of Zion as church of Zion. Jiangalie kama Mungu anasema na wewe binafsi. 
Just see as if God is speaking to you personally. Say, Lord, help me. The one who has the keys of David. The one who has final authority over my life. Speak a word, Lord. Help me understand the authority that you've given me. Help me understand the authority that you have given me. Help me to be faithful to the opportunities that you've given me. To have spiritual capacity. To be faithful to your word. To be faithful to you, Jesus Christ. That I may speak about you anywhere. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven. We are before you at this time as your church. We thank you for the salvation that has come. You are faithful, true and righteous. You are holy. Help us your church. That we may live a holy life. That pleases you. So that we can live. According to your word. Help me, Father. That I may not be a weak Christian. But I should stand in your truth. I may stand in holiness. That I may understand the opportunities that you have given me. That I may hold fast to your word. I may be faithful to you. That I may understand spiritual things. That I may understand spiritual battles. That I may understand the authority that I have. And I may understand what the enemy is also doing. Help me, Lord Jesus. Give me spiritual eyes. Holy Father, we are before you. Help us, our merciful Father. We pray for your grace and your mercy of our lives. Help us as your church. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Fill us afresh. Fill us with your power. Fill us with your grace. Fill us with your power. Without you we cannot. It's you who have set an open door before this church. Because they had little strength. Help us Lord. Help us Lord. Help us Lord. Hold us by your righteous right hand. Thank you for your mercy and your grace. Thank you for the glory of your name. Thank you Holy Spirit of God. Walk through us Lord. Walk in us Lord. Allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you. May he show us the conditions of our hearts. Sometimes you complain to God, open the doors, open the doors, but we have closed it. Jesus wept over Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you have missed the day of your appointed time. God is the God of second chance. He can open another door before us. And he's saying that no one will be able to close that door. 
si shetani wala mwanadamu not the devil or a man ma adam jia zetu zitakuwa sawia na mungu as long as our ways are right with god tembe mm. rumbe Move Holy Spirit. Habakuki anasema mimi nitasimama katika zamu yangu Habakuk says that I will stand on my post. Nione atakalo litenda Bwana katika habari za kulalamika kwangu. Then I may see what you'll do about their complaints. Simama katika zamu yako. Stand on your God. Mungu amekuweka kwa makusudi katika wakati huu. God has put you for a purpose in this season. Na ameweka mlango ulio wazi. And he has set an open door. Lakini sisi hatuoni but we don't see it kwa sababu macho yetu ya kiroho hayajatiwa nuru because our spiritual eyes are not enlightened tuguse roho mtakatifu wa mungu touch us holy spirit tuguse roho mtakatifu wa mungu touch us holy spirit tuguse roho mtakatifu wa mungu touch us holy spirit tuguse mchana wa leo e bwana touch us this afternoon liguse kanisa la kote touch your church jehovah god tuguse Tunapoendelea na maombi kama uko mahali hapa hujampa Yesu maisha yako. As we continue with prayer if you are here and you have not given your life to Christ. Au ulikuwa umeokoka ukarudi nyuma. Or you are backslidden. Usiogope kumrudia bwana wako. Do not be afraid to return back to your Lord. Si pamoja kanisa hili wasema kwa kuwa umelikiri jina langu nami nitakuokoa katika saa ya kujaribiwa kwako. One of the attribute of that church is because you have proclaimed my name I will deliver you in the hour of your trial. Usiogope kumkubali Yesu hadharani. Do not be afraid to accept Christ publicly. Inua mkono wako pale ulipo. Just raise up your hand wherever you are kama unahitaji kumpa Yesu maisha you are not saved you are not born again you need to give Christ your life au umerudi nyuma or if you are backslidden huu ni wakati wako this is your time mlango uko wazi the door is open utumie use it inua mkono wako pale ulipo just raise up your hand wherever you are kama upo if you are there and you want to accept Christ Asante Yesu. Thank you Jesus. Asante Yesu. Thank you Jesus. Asante kwa neema yako. Thank you for your grace. Asante kwa wokovu wako. Thank you for your salvation. Tumeomba haya. We pray. Na kuamini by faith. Katika jina la Kristo mokozi wetu. In the name of Jesus Christ our savior. Amen. 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 Amen.